So in the last three years, we've seen the massive growth of a green bonds market from a small scale. We've seen 10 billion, 37 billion of issuance, and this year we're on target somewhere between 70 and 100 billion of issuance. It's a really important development for the responsible investment community. It's come from the responsible investment community, but it's now widened way beyond. If you like, it shows the power of the responsible investment community. The proposition's a bit different, however, from what we've been looking at ESG in the past. This is not necessarily about explaining risks to investors. To shift money quickly, this is about ensuring products offered to investors where the proceeds go to green, but where the risk is addressed under the hood of the product by governments, by corporations or whatever. So the bulk of issuance in this area so far has been what are called corporate or development bank earmark bonds, fully treasury backed, highly rated, safe, secure, where the proceeds are earmarked for green investments. This is an exciting development. This is actually a template for how we can tackle social problems that do require a partnership between the public sector and the private sector. These investments go to things like clean energy, like transport, low carbon transport, like clean water, and a range of things relevant to low carbon transition and a transition to a climate resilient economy. It's a huge area we can do this. Where this particular model is important is it makes clear that governments can mobilise private capital. We have a now enormous evidence of investor demand if only they do one thing or another to ensure that the investment comes in at the rating requirement of the investor. Of course the amazing thing about the age we live in is that bond rates yields are so low that the appetite now for A- minus is what you would have got a few years ago for AAA so you can actually finance a huge amount of things without having full guarantees or full support from governments. So this is just an opportunity for governments, incredible opportunity. Now that doesn't necessarily mean governments have to issue bonds. Governments can provide contracts, so private organisations issue bonds to build green infrastructure. The bulk of this stuff is green infrastructure and that gives you a clue to the kinds of solutions and investments that we'll see going forward. This isn't just rich countries. We've seen bonds already out of India, or out of South Africa, out of Thailand, out of the Philippines. We will see a huge growth in China this coming year. And of course the, um, the other sleeping giant of the bond world here is Japan, where we've only seen one green bond come out of Japan, but just recently we've discovered that the largest insurance companies in Japan actually have exposure to green bonds in the billions of dollars. Clearly there's a potential for that market to explode as well, and so we think 2016. So it's a global phenomenon, it's because the proposition fundamentally is very simple. We use vanilla structures, no complicated structuring here, we are simply ensuring that if you buy one of these investments, the proceeds go to qualifying green investments. And of course part of the job of an NGO like ours, as well as of other NGOs, is to ensure the funds really do to go to the right areas. And um, you know, it's exciting. You know, the, most, the interesting thing about this market is that what it's really doing is re-energising and reopening discussions with governments who have been stuck on policy sclerosis for years and suddenly when they see evidence of investor demand they give organisations like us a call and say, what do we do? Give us the plan again. How do we mobilise capital? That's really the secret of this market.